This is David Harper with Multiversity Comics here at New York Comic Con with Scott Alley and James Heron from BPRD. And uh, we're, we're doing a special interview outside because the next arc that's coming up for BPRD is the Reign of the, or Reign of the Black Flame, which finds James illustrating a story from John Arcudi and Mike Mignola in which the BPRD goes in to see what's, go, what's going on with New York, what is happening in this world. And what is happening, guys? What are you doing to New York? Well, um, leading up to this story, uh, there's been just apocalyptic events all across the U.S. We've been kind of wiping out cities, and some countries have been gone. Um, with We've been hinting that something's wrong with New York, that there's been total radio silence from New York. Um, about a year ago, in a series that Tyler drew, um, The Return of the Master, we sort of teased that the Zinco Corporation was going to bring back Rasputin, mm -hmm. the villain from the very first Hellboy series, and um, it looked like that's who they, they that's who they were trying to bring back. Zinco had teamed up with the Nazis, uh, very elderly Nazis who'd been with Rasputin back in 1944, and. Um, they tried to bring him back, but what they got instead was the Black Flame, who had been killed a couple of years earlier in the King of Fear. Mm -hmm. So now the Black Flame's back, and he's dominating New York City. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, we're picking up where we left off with uh, Black Flame stuck inside the um, the gigantic artificial body. Yeah. And um, yeah, there's a lot of surprises because New York, like he said, it's been it's been black for a while. We don't know what's going on there, mm -hmm. and. Um, I don't want to ruin anything, but yeah, there's going to be a lot of surprises, for sure. Okay. Well, one thing I'm very curious about, and, and uh, as a big fan of your art, it's, it's cool to see what... I, I've read the first two issues, and it's cool to see what you can do with, like, a cityscape that you... I mean, you're, you're a New Yorker, correct? Uh, currently, yes, I am. A fresh New Yorker yeah, for, like, nine months now, yeah. Okay, well, have you worked any of your current, you know, New Yorker self into the landscape, into building this new version of New York that we don't quite know yet? Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of getting away from the drawing desk. Because <laughs> sadly, <laughs> there's so much of New York that I don't get to see and I'm yeah. drawing it. It feels a little weird. Like the first two, I moved here uh, when I started the project. And uh, like two months in, I realized like I had barely left the apartment and I was going based on Google Maps which is kind of sad. So I've been going around trying to find good spots, um, doing, doing a little bit of photo uh, ref, looking mm -hmm. first for, for something specific, you know. Um, but yeah, it's it's been good. Yeah. Um, well, in the in the book, part of the cast is like the humans. It, it's the you've really been focusing quite a bit lately on the human cast, and uh, it, amongst the leads are uh, people from like uh, you have Gio Rocco, who you had previously illustrated in Long Death, right. some and mutilated, her. And, and mutilated, yeah. <laughs> Make a diagram of the mutilation as well. <laughs> And then you have uh, you have other characters like Enos, you have Gervish and Nichols who are really prominent in the the recent issue or arc from Lawrence Campbell. Uh, and then uh, you know you just have this sprawling human cast. For you, James, a as an artist who like I have to admit like one of the things I really love about your work is uh, is the monsters you do. It's just so incredible. Like you you bring this monstrosity these monstrosities to life, but they still have I don't know they just have such power to you uh, to them. Uh, for the humans like. Well, how do you start developing personalities for them from wh where Scott and Mike and John are coming from? Uh, well, John, John's got good dialogue and you can just sort of, um, you get a sense of their voice and their presence just from that alone, mm -hmm. usually. Um, I, don't, I can't say that I'm adding much. I think, yeah. I think John does a lot of the work beforehand mm -hmm. as far as the characters go. Yeah. Um, yeah. It seems like very much like all hands on deck type situation. You're going to New York City and with, with all those involved, like, w w how did you guys develop the cast for this series? Well, we've been building it for such a long time. You know, Nichols, I think, was a character that really got focused for the first time in The Long Death, yeah. which James drew. And it occurs to me that uh, one of the other big characters here is Howard's, mm -hmm. um, who emerged in the, the two-parter that we did together, The Abyss of Time. So, you know, John does an incredible job of making real humans that are maybe part of the background at first. They, they're kind of insignificant at first, and they slowly get more and more focus and it allows the reader to really kind of uh, grow a relationship with them and the good thing about I mean one of the nice things about the, the reign of the black flame is that we're also bringing a lot of the you know sort of special agents yeah. back into it um, it's the first major like operation with the BPRDs teaming up with the Russians yeah so we got Yosef who um, I think you've been involved in read Yosef gets redesigned a lot mm -hmm. um, and you've had some involvement with that Right. A little bit. A little bit. Um, not to ruin anything, but yes, yeah, the zombie in a can. He's gonna have. He's gonna have a couple <laughs> of different incarnations, I think. Nice. 
Because he appeared originally in the Abe Abyssal yeah. Plane, right? Yeah. yeah, and he's just he was a straight up zombie. Mm -hmm. And I think I don't I I could be wrong about this. We don't understand quite how he's like a, how he's living. The, the means they use to keep him alive? Yeah, no, I, I, I think that, uh, I mean, when he was introduced in the Abyssal Plane, wasn't he, he was just down on the bottom of the sea in a, a submarine, right? Right, yeah, he was just a zombie, and, and there was nothing in that initial story to sort of indicate that he was going to survive it, mm -hmm. you know, or, or even at the end of the story, there was nothing that told you that he would still be around later, right. but we just, uh, we really liked, we liked the idea of the character, and, you know, what often happens is John or Mike or whoever sort of needs a, a character and you look at what's laying around and mm -hmm. it was like what if what if that guy lived what if that guy's still around somehow and what if he's the head of the russian you know occult services mm -hmm. um so yeah but what james said you know john does an incredible job of creating real people mm -hmm. and so i think that's the only way that this works where we have our outrageous colorful special agents like liz is back in action right. as of reign of the black flame Liz is a key player again. Um, and how do you make her and Jiroko be of equal interest to the reader? And right. I think John's like the best guy in the world for doing that. Absolutely. Well, what makes James such a perfect fit for this arc in particular? Well, you know, I mean, the, the biggest thing is that we knew we wanted to go really big. We knew that the action and the dynamics of this were going to be colossal. Right. We, knowing our plans really far in advance, like, you know, we, we plan things really far out. And so, James uh, was heavily involved in designing this new incarnation of the Black Flame, even though he first appeared in a story uh, drawn by Tyler. Right. But we knew that Tyler was going to draw him in you know, a handful of panels, and that James was going to be drawing this massive series. So we figured it made sense to design him with James. But James can do, you know, you will never in the history of comics see a better moose versus a wendigo fight <laughs> than uh we did in long death oh my god and oh when that god. happened i mean that was the moment where we're like oh my god we have to we, we got to keep this guy working yeah. and we got to keep giving him scenes that are worthy of him and i think reign of the black flame you know delivers there's some stuff that i, I there's some things so big in that so dynamic and exciting and fun that i'm just really grateful we got james to mm -hmm. do it now, James, uh, I mean, obviously, besides Wendigo versus Moose fights and things of, of those sorts, what is it that appeals to you about working in this world, working in this world where it's, you know, the world really is ending and there's just a force that's striving to keep it alive? Yeah, um, it's, it's such a great um, place to demonstrate scale, I, just a scale, imagination. You can't, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure... Yeah, it's just it's just a great the, the world's ending. There's 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 far less rules. Um, it's, it's a it's a great book to work on for sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah, this, this New York project's gonna be insane. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the fifth issue right now, and there's so <laughs> many things that I just I'm I'm not even I don't even know how to start drawing that. It's gonna be insane. I, I've already uh, I read the first two issues, and you know this isn't a spoiler. I'm I'm just gonna say that there's one part in it. Uh, I believe it was in the first issue of something that the 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 cast who didn't go through the tunnel the, 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 they discovered that was one of the most haunting images I've oh, ever yeah. actually seen well and and not dynamic or loud or exciting no. or action-packed but definitely when we read that in the script we're just like oh no this yeah. is awful and and James and Dave I think Dave gets a lot of credit for making that scene work because yeah it's we we like the big explosive stuff but we like smart quiet moody things as well and the guys all really delivered on the scene you're talking about <laughs> yeah that was I, I read that and i just my jaw literally dropped and i was like oh my god it's it's haunting yeah, yeah john, john and i've been talking about that for a while it's something he wanted to work in um he didn't know if he was going to do it in a private project or if he could fit it into bprd and it worked it worked really well um that's that's the nice thing about bprd he said uh, you know with the first issue you can have something something uh, just high contrast you can have quiet dark deep places but then and then things blow up and there's crab monsters and you know what i mean you can yeah. go to you can go to any place you want to yeah, yeah absolutely um well w we mentioned dave dave stewart who's just a master of his craft he's just one of the most unbelievable colorists in the history of comics for you as an artist what is it like working with somebody like that um i mean i don't working with him well, like I mean, he just he does everything yeah. he does it he does it so well um uh yeah i couldn't i can't believe how lucky i am to have that guy finish my pages um, it's it's rare that I ever like to look back at my work. I don't like to look back uh, at my black and white pages. It's just you know, cringing and self-loathing. <laughs> but when Dave colors it, like it's this other dimension, and I yeah. go back and I find all these things that he did, 
that embellish and exaggerate and just they add so much to the to the to the pages. It's really it's really nice. Absolutely. Well, um, you know, the, obviously the big arc's coming, and we have a lot of stuff that's going to be told in Lake of Fire that's going to inform what's happening. But for for the both of you, what are you excited about in the next while for BPRD? What what what, what about what's next that's really getting you going? Uh, well, you know, I mean, Reign of the Black Flame. I feel like Return of the Master took everything up to the next level, and that was just last year, and and it was a game changer. I, the thing that I love about BPRD is that we're pulling the rug out from under our main characters all the time. We are, we're having these game-changing moments pretty frequently, and so Reign of the Black Flame is takes many aspects of BPRD to a higher level than we've ever taken it before, and we've been having these story conferences lately over the phone, the three, Mike and uh, John and I, talking about where things are going, not just in BPRD, but in Abe and in right. the, the other books. And um, we know that we have some moments down the road that are going to be bigger, yeah. you know, and, and more payoff, more satisfying to the reader. So I, there, to an extent, you know, Reign of the Black Flame is just bigger and badder than, than anything I've ever been involved in. But I know that that's not the peak. You know, yeah. I know that there's some stuff coming that at first when we talk about it, one of us will say, oh, well, but we can't do that. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, wait, can we? <laughs> I think we can. I think Mike owns it. So I think we can, you know, nobody's saying, no, you can't tell the story you want to tell. Yeah. So it's, um, I, there's some things to look forward to that emotionally are going to be gut-wrenching for the characters and that visually are just going to be out of this world. Uh, yeah, the, the cool thing about the Black Flame, like Scott was saying, it's, it feels like a, like a threshold yeah. in a way because the world, uh, if New York's this bad, then the, the, there's no hope. You know, infrastructure's down, um, things are going to get a lot worse, and which is good for the reader. <laughs> good for the reader, but not so well for the denizens of the BPRD universe. Well, for a while, Mike and John and I kind of had this, like, agreement that we wouldn't destroy uh, Philadelphia, <laughs> Portland, or, um, or L.A., because we just didn't want to jinx ourselves. Right. Um, there was a little while when we would, John would write something in the script, and then we'd hear about some disaster in that part of the world, and we started getting nervous. So yeah. sorry, we didn't know you were going to move here when when <laughs> we worked all this out. It's really eerie. Yeah, it's really eerie drawing like the the flooded tunnel as like I'm taking a bus there back and forth. Oh yeah. And looking for you know you're looking for just destructive uh, picture reference for New York specific. It's a little haunting. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine that. I, I do notice you guys went after Seattle. You didn't go after Portland. Right. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Well, actually, what that was, we we were doing the Emerald City Comic Con, yeah. and they asked us to do a, a special comic that would just be like a giveaway there, I yeah. think. Maybe it was for sale. I think it was a giveaway. And we're like, oh, yeah, we can mess up Seattle. John lived there for a while. He knows, <laughs> he knows exactly what he wants to break. My, Mike always says, he said it in a number of interviews, Mike's always saying, like, we're breaking things that can't be fixed. Yeah. And, you know, Galactus shows up here, levels the city. Things are usually okay a month or two later. But what we're doing, it, New York doesn't bounce back from yeah. what, what James is drawing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I can say as a fan of BPRD and as somebody who hosts Mignola, uh, Mignola Versity, we're all excited for what you guys are going to do next. And read Ra Reign of the Black Flame. It's going to be one of the best series in the history of BPRD. Starts in January. Starts in January.